All right, you have before you a copy of the written agenda. Alderman Maynard. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, under um, Departmental Business Personnel, item 11, I-1, uh, there is a revised um, agenda item in front of you. One of the personnel police officers has withdrawn from consideration of filling the vacated position. So it's, there's three instead of four, and that item is before you as presented. I would like to make a motion that we adopt that as an amended item. I haven't seen who, who are the three names that... Um... <coughs> There were four in our packet, and there's now three. One just removed. Oh, that document's on the table. It is, yes. All right, so your proposed revision is. One second. My, my proposed revision, Mayor, is request authorization to hire Harrison Hatcher, um, Gilberto. Jim is is and Michael Walker to fill the vacant positions of certified police officers in the police department. All right, so the proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to change item 11I2 uh, to read as follows. Request authorization to hire Harrison Hatcher, Gilberto Jimenez, Michael, and Michael Walker to fill the vacant positions of certified police officers in the police department otherwise as presented or as presented on the table. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do I hear any objection? Let me ask the chief. Uh, so um, this is something that just recently came up since the deadline. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, between now and the time, uh, present time, he took a job in his hometown. Okay. Okay. That's, that, that's an excellent answer. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. No objection, Mayor. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir, Mayor. Under um, item 11, departmental business under planning two, uh, request approval for placement of banners in city streets by volunteer Starkle. I'd like to place that on consent. All right, so that's item 11. B to A. A yes, sir. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place the approval of placement of banners on uh, city streets by volunteer Starkville as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Mayor, let's go ahead and hear from him collectively. I, I don't have an objection. I mentioned to the board we're going to start back with consent tonight. Let's go ahead and hear it in the save time. We can just kind of get a collective list on it. We can just do one motion. All right. Is there any objection? Any? Okay. I've also got a comment on that. I think the department heads have done an excellent job. We've asked them a month or two ago to get everything by Friday at 5, and as long as they continue to do it, then uh, I've got no objection with that. All right. Any objection to Alderman Maynard's proposed revision? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Um, place item 11B2B, request approval, rezoning, Request by Moreland Real Estate LLC to rezone 0.59 acres plus or minus located at 1769 Louisville Street from R3 multifamily to C2 general business on consent. All right, that matter requires a public hearing. So prior to asking for the revision, I'll ask is there any comment on that matter? Uh, and what uh, 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 Alderman Maynard is doing is he's going to place this matter on consent agenda. Uh, so this, in the event that it goes on the consent agenda, is your opportunity uh, to make any comments uh, you'd like on the proposed rezoning. Is there anyone here who would like to comment on the proposed rezoning? Is there anyone who would like to comment? Is there anyone who would like to comment? Seeing no one, the proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place the approval of RZ 14-07, a rezoning request by Moreland Real Estate LLC to rezone 0.59 acres plus or minus located at 1769 Louisville Street from R3 Multifamily to C2 General Business uh, as presented. Uh, Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, Do I hear any objection? I don't have an objection. I just want uh, if this is going on consent, I would just like to clarify with the city attorney. Uh, one thing that how it's stated in the package is that the proposed use for the subject property is for many storage units. 
is it correct that what in a rezoning that what we're looking at here is uh, clearly only looking at what the rezoning is and it's not bound by what the um, the applicant states that they may or may not use that for. So in fact, if this is approved, it is for C2 and it would allow anything by right that is allowed under that zoning. Correct. Is there any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed provision? Yes, sir. Under 11D2, request approval to advertise for bids on a service truck to replace Truck 35, place on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place the approval to advertise for bids on a service truck to replace service truck or to replace truck 35 as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying no, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Place item three and item four under that same heading on consent. All right, uh, proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11D3 and item 11D4 on the consent agenda. Those items are as follows. 11D3 is a request for approval to accept the lowest and best bid for the January 1st, 2015 through the June 30th, 2015 source of supply listing for the Sartwell Electric Department as presented. And item 11D4 is a request for authorization for Terry Kemp to travel to Chattanooga, Tennessee for the seven state uh, executive committee uh, meeting on January 13th, 2015 as presented. Alderman Manners, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, those matters have been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Manners, do you have further proposed revisions? Under 11I personnel, items one and two placed on consent. All right, the proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place items one and two under Roman numeral 11I on the consent agenda. <coughs> Those items are as follows. A request for authorization to fill the vacant position for firefighter in the fire department as presented and a request for authorization to hire Harrison Hatcher, Gilberto Jimenez, Michael Walker, and Michael Walker to fill the vacant positions of certified police officers in the police department as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none. Those matters have been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Item J1 under police. All right. Placed on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11J1, a request for authorization of implementation of the chaplain program, a, a voluntary program as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. I just want to clarify that Chief has the ability to add additional chaplains as he sees fit for this program. That's just make sure that's understood. Mr. Mayor, I like to I, I'm gonna have an objection unless I can get this included. You have ten names now, right, Chief? Yes, sir. But well, we're gonna go ahead and add the other two names tonight. You want to add pa uh, Pastor Reverend what two names you want to add? Buckner and um uh, Pastor Charlie Barnes. Charlie Barnes. Okay, we're going to add those two names. And yes, with sir. those two names, may I have no objection? All so, right, so Alderman Maynard is your proposed revision uh, to add that item as presented uh, with uh, the following additions uh, Pastor Johnny Buckner and uh, Pastor Charlie Barnes. Uh, yes, sir. All right, uh, is there any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter's been added to the consent agenda. All right, man. Do you have further? What was that second name? Charlie Barnes. Thank you. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir, Mayor. I would like to remove item 11L1. Proposed, yes, proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to remove item 11L1 from the agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none of that item has been removed from the agenda? Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Just one more, Mayor. Under board business 10, I would like to, based on the item that was brought before the Budget Committee yesterday, I would like to add an item D, discussion and consideration of a one-time funding request of $3,000 from the Unity Park Committee to support the finalization of that project.
All right, the proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to add an item D uh, to Roman numeral 10, board business, and that is the discussion and consideration of a one-time request from the Unity Park Committee to support the finalization of that project. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? I just have a comment first. Uh, is the is there what's the reason that this can't be added to the agenda for our next next meeting so we have a little bit more information to why and what they're requesting this funding for yes sir I, they're trying to get that open by um, Martin Luther King Day and I, I got it Monday um, basically they raised private funds the county has kicked in an additional ten thousand um, dollars in order to cover the final cost of plants and the one new panel that they're adding for the um, to honor the game of change that's, that's 3,000 they need to complete that project okay no any objection any objection any objection saying none that might have been added to the agenda are there any all the remainder do you have further I have to go. one more under um, 11d Electric department, item one, put that on consent. The proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11D1, the request for ratification of an application to participate in the renewable standard offer program with TVA as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have any further proposed revisions? Promise this is the last one. Under <laughs> board business, item B, place that on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 10B on the consent agenda. That is a, a, a change order. A, that's change order number two uh, for phase two construction uh, contract of the parking garage and to realign the CDBG budget to reflect the construction change order adjustment of budgeted line items as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objections? I object to that one. I'd like to hear a little bit uh, about what those changes actually are. No problem. Alderman Maynard, do you have any further proposed revisions? No, sir. Alderman Ball. He left one up on the board business. Item C. Move the consent. <laughs> The proposed revision uh, by Alderman Vaughn is to place the appointments to boards and commissions in the city of Starkville as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Vaughn, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Vaughn, do you have any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Are there any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Any further proposed revision? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda is revised is in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Little to approve the agenda as revised. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Next matter you have before you is the consideration of the December 2nd, 2014 minutes of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen at the City of Starkville as reviewed by the City Attorney. Uh, discussion. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Carver to approve the December 2nd, 2014 minutes of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville as reviewed by the City Attorney and as presented uh, with City Attorney corrections. So, Alderman Carver, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do we hear a second? Second. Right. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Carver, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is announcements and comments by the Mayor and Board. Uh, and uh, I have several new police officers to introduce this evening. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Reginald Campbell. It wasn't very long ago that Reginald Campbell was being introduced as a new firefighter, but he recently made the move to the Starkville Police Department. Reginald is from Starkville and is a graduate of Starkville High School and also attended East Mississippi Community College. 
Reginald is the son of Angie and Reginald Campbell, and he has two brothers, Jalen and Austin Campbell. In his spare time, Reginald enjoys fishing and playing baseball. He and his family attend Sand Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming Reginald Campbell. I'd now like to introduce Barry Doss. Barry is a graduate, of, is from Starkville and attended Starkville High School as well as Louis, Louisville High School. He attended Delta State University and Mississippi State University. Previously, Barry worked as a patrolman in the Forest County Police Department in, the city of, in Forest City, Arkansas. He also worked with the Picayune Police Department and the Shelby County Division of Corrections as a correctional officer. Barry and his wife, Amber, are the proud parents of two children, Bailey and Adrian Doss. Barry enjoys spending time with his family as well as sports and fitness. He and his family attend Mount Pillar Missionary Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming Barry Doll. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to welcome Josh Horton. Josh is also from Starkville. He, is, he graduated from Starkville High and attended EMCC studying criminal justice. His work experience includes Clark, Clark Beverage, MSU Housing Department, Multiforms and Supplies, and Hardware. Josh and his wife, Erica, enjoy playing with their two dogs, uh, a Maltese named Bentley and a mutt named Molly. Josh and Erica attend Emanuel Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming Josh Horton. And that concludes my comments tonight. Prior to opening uh, the floor for board <coughs> comments, uh, it has been brought to my attention that I neglected uh, to ask for the adoption of the consent agenda. Uh, is there any objection uh, to the approval of the consent agenda at this time? Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying <coughs> the consent agenda has been approved at this time. Are there any comments from the members of the board? All right, I saw Wynn first, and then I saw Walker next. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I want to say, Ms. Harden, thank you so much to you and your staff. I know the last four, maybe three or four of our board packets have been put together by the ladies in your department. So I want to say thank you, thank you so much for the great job that they've done. And I want to call their names out. The deputy clerks in the city's clerk's office are accounts receivable, Kanisha Hendricks, accounts payable, Ash Ashley Wigglesworth, account Martisa Bishop, college interim, Jamaica Smith, and our grants coordinator, Joanna McLaurin. Thank them so much and thank you for the great job you do with them. Mr. May and one more. I Chief Nichols, will you please come to the front for me, please? It should only take a second. I understand that your department has been the recipient of several grants. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> um, we just recently received a grant for $98,000 to get a new car, uh, some cameras for a uh, university drive, and uh, two segways. Um, as of fiscal year 2014, we received over $250,000 in grants. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to have you to come back before we approve the claims docket. Too. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank Mr. Mayor, I yield the floor at this time. Alderman Walker. Uh, I just want to say Happy New Year, and uh, in light of the, the recent storm we had, just wanted to, to thank <coughs> Terry Kemp and all the folks that worked so hard at Starkville Electric, uh, as well as the, the fire department, sanitation, and the police department, and everybody else for um, jumping in and, and getting us back up and running and trying to keep the city as safe as possible uh, when we were in, in the dark for, for several hours there. So thank you and, uh, and working under adverse conditions for a job well done. Alderman Little. I want to uh, echo uh, Alderman Walker's comments. I appreciate you guys getting out so quickly the other night. Uh, it was not near as bad as it could have been, fortunately, and um, you guys were out there, Johnny on the spot. Um, thank you, uh, Edward, for getting your guys to clear the streets over there in Sherwood so, so quickly. And uh, on a Saturday night, I know sometimes it's kind of hard to get folks together, especially in the rain and cold, but uh, we do appreciate everything you guys had, do had done that evening. Um, as far as debris removal, we're not going to have near the debris we had in October, it doesn't look like, fortunately. Um, Mr. Adams, could you uh, give us some what the plans are as disposing and what the timeline we're, we should expect on getting all this stuff picked up? All right. Sure, and thank you for that, Alderman. Uh, the mayor and I met with uh, with uh, with our with uh, our department heads in uh, light uh, water sewer and uh, 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 street, as well as uh, sanitation, yesterday to put a plan together. We're, we're proposing essentially the uh, 
the same, a, a smaller version of the plan that we deployed uh, after the, the larger storm, which is basically we'll, uh, uh, we're going to, instead of a month, instead of 40 days, we're going to, we're basically going to ask for uh, 10 days that we're allowed, where, we'll, where we will be out there actively working the affected areas to, uh, to get the streets clear, to get, to get the material up. Um, we're, we're asking the board, uh, just like we did in that event, to allow people to bring material to the landfill at, at no cost, uh, simply in, if, someone, uh, if someone wants to get it out of the way, they don't have time to wait on us. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, but we anticipate that, uh, that uh, weather permitting, we'll have, we'll have this up in 10 days. Another rain event could delay that by a week. But, uh, but the damage was not nearly as extensive uh, this time as it was a few weeks ago. And so we're, we're optimistic that we can, that we can have, uh, that we can have uh, the situation restored as close to normal as possible in 10 days. I understand sanitation's uh, picker is still messed up. Uh, it, it is, but, uh, but I'd like to commend our staff. I think they've come up with, a, with an outstanding uh, Plan A and Plan B, based on resources we have at, at, at our disposal today, and, and we're confident that we can meet that 10-day deadline. And and and, would, and and given a moment again, would like to commend those department heads. It's a, and just as the, this is in the order that I see you, but but Doug Devlin, Edward Kemp, uh, uh, Terry Kemp, and, uh, and and Emma Gandy for uh, for their efforts and really coming together and, and brainstorming to get us a good solution. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Could, uh, Edward, I guess you're the one. Could you give us an update on the progress on the turnaround there on Megs? I know we've had a lot of inclement weather, which is to be expected this time of year. I have not met with them since after the first of the year, I believe, the 19th. Is that right? That's right. They're, they're scheduled to be completed. I know that they did. They have done some uh, pouring of some curbing. I, I believe the, the center island has been poured and the outside. Could you follow up with them and, and bump us with an email or something as far as timeline? Be sure they're, you know, those business owners that are affected and that we're not going to fall behind, just like Alderman Perkins had mentioned. Alderman, to it. Alderman, in, in, in preparation for this meeting, uh, thinking that question might come, I spoke with the contractor today, and they are on schedule. Excellent. They are on schedule. All right. Um, I noticed we've got some mayor's youth council present. Is that right? Would you guys stand? Appreciate you guys being here and everything that you, you're doing. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. excuse me. One, if are you Chris Carr? So are you the one? Tell us about your award today because I saw something your mom pa posted on Facebook. Will you stand, please? Yes. Um, I got the. Uh, I was an all-state, um, and it's basically I, I think a big award just for. Uh, all the volleyball girls that got one of the best. I think your coach has to um, nominate you, which my coach, Coach Love, did. Um, very honored about that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just published today on the Grand Magic. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> How you doing? All right, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Ball. Uh, Mr. Adam, what is your, what is your plan for to clean up the rubbish? What are the, your plans? We're, again, we're looking at a two-phase plan, the, in the, and this is in response to the fact that, that in, in the last storm, our, uh, our knuckle boom, we used it to the point that it broke, and the part that, uh, that we need to repair it um, has been on back order. And so, uh, and so uh, Ms. Gandy's folks have done all they can. It's just that piece of, that piece of equipment is just down to we can get that part. So. The, Two place fan, the two-phase plan that our staff developed is we're going to start um, with the same assembly line of, gar of, uh, of dump trucks that we had last time. We're renting the largest, uh, well, uh, we're renting the largest or, or seeking access to the largest commercial chipper that we can find. So we're going to try to deal with as much of this material on site as we possibly can. Just chip it there right into the back of, the, uh, uh, of, uh, of these dump trucks. Haul it off for the... Uh, for the logs, we're looking at a at a uh, uh, at a different for the for the logs that are too big to go through that chipper. We're we're going to utilize <coughs> one of two things. Uh, one one is a uh, uh, it's a small excavator. It's called the Chef. It's that's the manufacturer. It's a German company that Street Department already owns. The the thing that makes that ideal for this type of work is that 
that excavator is on rubber tires already. It's what we generally use for street repair, for, for patching holes, things of that nature. So we'll deploy that to pick up the logs, to load the dump trucks, um, uh, which we feel like we'll get it in the event that we're, the, the, the second phase, I guess plan B is, if we're unable to, uh, to find a, shred, uh, a chipper that is large enough to meet the need that we have, uh, we'll, run, uh, we'll use a bobcat similar to what we used last time to lift that material and load the trucks. It's just a, that's a little less efficient because uh, when you load those limbs, you've got the air in between the branches and all that, and it takes up a lot more space. It's a lot more load. It's a lot more fuel. If we can use the chipper on site, that material is basically broken up right then, and we can we can get a lot more on, on a single truck. But but uh, but our staff is is confident that that plan will uh, will meet the public's need to get this weather permitted cleaned up in the next ten days. Mr. Mike? Mr. Adams, so, you know, we're saying 10 days, we need a waiver of the, the fees for storm damage well, we, and material? We, we would, uh, and, and we would ask for 15 days, just, but um, again, because uh, there, uh, we know that at, at the very least that there's going to be uh, some very cold weather coming this week that could, basically, that could inhibit someone's ability to, uh, to, to handle this themselves. But uh, in the event that we get a rain, it could slow it down. And certainly we want to incentivize any citizen uh, that wants, that just wants to, to move a, a little faster. So yeah, so we would ask for 15 days at the landfill alderman. We need board action for that, Mr. You do. If you're agreeable, yes. I'm, I would be fine with that. that I think that's fine. That's right. Put us up to the 21st for 15 days. And I, I move with we accept any storm debris material uh, to landfill free of charge through January 21st. Motion has been made by Alderman Little to waive tipping fees uh, at the landfill for any storm-related debris until uh, January 1st, uh, January 21st, uh, 2015. Alderman Little, such a motion? Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Maynard. Alderman Little, you wish to speak on the merits. Gotcha. Any discussion? Any discussion? I just have one for, uh, I again, commend you all for coming up with a plan. What is this, how is this going to impact your budgets, and uh, do you feel comfortable that, 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 uh, having this isn't going to negatively impact your budget uh, for the current year. Miss, miss any, anybody, if you, I guess one at a time, if you all feel like this is something that your budget can handle. That's it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The, oh, we're in board comments. Uh, any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. At this time, any citizen wishing to make comments this evening may do so by coming forward Introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. I'm Melvin Williams with Mayor's Youth Council, and so far we're thinking about tutoring and brick fire. I mean, not brick fire, but on Head Start, Head Start, and we're still waiting to hear back, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you for your service. Good evening to everyone. Happy New Year uh, to the Mayor and Board. My name is Alvin Tom Ward Seven. Um, and in the prayers, uh, I'd like for you to remember my friend Rafiq Mateen and the Taylor family. Uh, citizen concern. Uh, on Zuba Street, and other streets on Long Street, the housing authority we have a problem with cats and dogs. And we have the elderly, and they're afraid to set the garbage out because they might meet a, a rock rider or a dome. <clears throat> and uh, they have to wind up keeping it in the house. Uh, so uh, the elderly on that part of town, we need an animal control to count help them out. Uh, 
the police department. Uh, it's time for a change. We had a bloody December, and now this is a new year. Uh, we need to respect our first responders more. Our, uh, I miss my church, man. Our, uh, but our, uh, when you're doing the best you can, all right, that's all you can do. Uh, but it's, it's sad that uh, one of the first responders are, uh, are being treated at the end. Are uh, agitators and stuff that uh, urging this stuff up, lad, they need to be stopped. Are uh, burning down cities and stuff, lad, that's uh, uh, uncivilized. All right, uh, let's respect our first responders better because they're doing it and we're not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Or any further citizen comments? <clears throat> Happy New Year to anybody. Uh, my name is Chris Taylor, president of Tip County NAACP, and I'd like to say thank you for the uh, $3,000 donation on Unity Park which we'll be unveiling finally after what so many years. And that would happen at uh, 14, well, 2 o'clock on the 19th at the end of the March. So I want to say again, thank you. Thank you, and Happy New Year. Yes, sir. Further citizen comments? Am I on the way up here? <clears throat> I got out in the rain during the storm, and uh, this is a, this is a issue that's been continuing going on. Come on, guys, and uh, this is a continuum. I got out in the rain; they called me, in. and it didn't look good. We got to do something over there. Elvin and I ever got a plan, but uh, but this is something I want to show you all. This is a Mr. Hill house right here. There's water coming off the hill at Mr. Hill house right here. When the water flows off Mr. Hill house, it flows right into Mr. Johnson house. And, and, and it's a, a ditch behind Mr. Johnson house where we, a ditch that we renovated and did some work to. So much water was coming at that particular time. The ditch couldn't even receive the water. So the water bag back up in Mr. Johnson yard, backyard and his carpool. Where is it? On the north side, north side drive. That's where the flooding of this yard is, and that's what the flooding is. <coughs> and it's been an ongoing problem for 30 some years that we still haven't got found a way to fix yet. But then we'll the John Hill, the problem starts up on North Lane and South Lane. Up there, you don't have any drains up there. The drains that you do have with it are too small. It's about so three inches, I mean 36 inches, something like that. But what it's doing is it's washing all of the debris into the drain, clogging the drains up. Then behind my house, there's another drain back there, which uh, Mr. Kempner uh, constructed back there. And we have another drain back there too. It's coming up off the drive. The drive goes all the way around. And the water is coming down there and washing that uh, that pavement that the water run down through and the washing the soil away from that. And it's coming right down to Mr. Johnson's yard and it's going into the ditch. Now they went over there and did some uh, cut some vegetation down. Yeah. All the vegetation they cut down is caused another problem. And you watching the roads and the soil away from it. And then it's washing the people's yard back down. Some of them have uh, 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 garages back there, and the garages is tilted. And so we've been having this problem for a good many of years. Um, well, I think we had it with uh, Alderman uh, Perkins was in there. You know, Miss Seth was in there. Uh, uh, when uh, Mayor Kemp was in there, you know, 
And so we've been having this problem for about 30 years. And we've been coming to the board, and you all know, asking y'all to do something about this here. But you won't ever do anything about it. You know, if you would come over and work with us and let us uh, know what you can do, when I know you can do better, <laughs> but you're saying, but you know, I know it takes time, you know, but it, it's been too long. But you know, we just, we just destroyed our problem. For long, our house gonna start tilting and the foundation gonna start cracking. You know, so we need help. So y'all just, just give us some help. And then this thing is still a whole, whole lot of water. And especially in the summer, it's a mosquito infected area. Right there. Very and bad. You really can't even sit on your porch or on your back porch in the summer because you got mosquitoes down there. Mr. Kemp has been working with this for a while. Uh, Mr. Kemp, could, could you elaborate a little bit on what's happening here and, and, and why uh, this particular section of the street is taking on so much water? Yes, sir. Uh, happy to, Mayor. Um, for those that, that don't know, let me give you a little bit of history of this neighborhood. This is the uh, North Side Drive, East Lane, uh, I mean, North Lane, South Lane, off of West Side Drive. And pretty much the neighborhood slopes from West Side Drive back toward uh, there's a drainage channel that runs along the south side of that neighborhood. Um, this neighborhood, when it was developed, unfortunately, did not have adequate storm drainage infrastructure that was installed as part of the subdivision. Uh, very minimal uh, drains, like Mr. Hill has mentioned. Uh, there is a lot of upstream water that's coming down the hill at very fast velocities. Um, it, it overwhelms the drains that are basically down at the bottom of the hill on Northside Drive. Um, as you know, elected officials know, because there's problems like this in just about every ward, it is very, very difficult to go back after the fact into a fully developed neighborhood and fix a problem like this after it's completely built out. The city has done some things over the past, well, before my time and since I've been here as well. We've tried to do some uh, inlet modifications upstream to try to capture more of the water before it comes down into the street. We've done some drainage wells, overflow drainage wells to try to get the water off of the street and into that, uh, that back ditch instead of going in Mr. Johnson's driveway. Um, the last board approved a, a pretty substantial improvement to that natural drainage ditch in the back. It was previously very grown up, had a lot of um, debris and um, uh, litter, uh, all kinds of things blocking that channel. It's been, uh, it's been widened and improved and, uh, and vegetated, but um, we still feel like there's some issues there. I'm not saying that we've solved the problem by any means. Um, um, I think we've done some things to help it, but from our calculations, there the pipes down between Mr. Hill's house and Mr. Johnson's house, and then the pipe leading all the way back to the ditch are both undersized and need to be improved in order to meet pretty much the minimum standard of today's storm drainage systems. So it would be my recommendation to, to add that project to the capital You may. Mr. Kemp, is there any dollar figure or just a rough estimate that you could put on that? I can. I have not done a cost estimate on that. I would have to do that and send it to the board. Appreciate that. Your, your Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Thank you all. Have a blessing. Mr. I just have one question for you. Um, Clearly, that's an issue that, that needs to be addressed, and I, the city engineer just, I, I think, gave us a, a recommendation on how we might move forward. Uh, and, and obviously, you've got an ongoing problem. Um, but since the last, since those other changes have been made, is, it, is this the first time uh, since those no. changes have been made, other than this last big major event that we had? No. no. So, Every time it rains, 
Every time, every time it rains, no matter no matter uh, the du duration of it, you you your yard gets flooded. Does any water get into your house? No, it has not yet. But it's it's crept on rain. We had one uh, lady, Miss uh, Miss Lynn, uh, Miss Kemp, know about her. The water got in her house, you know, and uh, it just got all up in her carport and got into her uh, front uh, living room and I think the kitchen too. But like I said, the problem is on South Lane, the North Lane, and the Drive. If you would improve the drainage side, that'll help a whole lot. If you improve the drainage side, that would help a whole lot. You know, I think you know about that yourself. Yep, you know. But the drainage is too small. Oh, that water come up that high when you drain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All my vault. Boy, it's just not those two houses involved. No. It's, it's the housing in front of them, behind them. It's just not those two houses involved. I'm, I'm sure it's not. We have lots of those issues. Mr. Kemp, how close is this neighborhood to the 100-year floodplain? Is it in close proximity or is it a, a long distance from? The floodplain, this, this channel drains to the west under the <coughs> road and basically through um, the industrial, the new technology park area. So I believe it starts about a So, so this neighborhood is getting closer and closer to the bottom of the, the hill, and most of this water is come, is being generated from upstream. Is that what right. you're, you're telling me? It is. It right. is. And, and I, I mentioned all of the ball and another. There's, there's quite a bit of wooded area between uh, the back of this neighborhood and Reed Road. And so one potential um, issue is if we could have some debris clogging it downstream. That's one thing we're going to be looking at uh, as quickly as possible. And if, and if so, Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Kim. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. <coughs> any further citizen comments? Are there any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, the next matter you have before you are board business, and the first matter is consideration of an amended resolution related to the intent of the city of Starkville to issue certificates of participation. Discussion. I'd like to just have some more uh, um, explanation on this. I know you and I have, have spoken about this earlier and, and yep. kind of just explain what we talked about. This matter, if you'll recall, uh, was one of the directives uh, that came from the last board meeting. Uh, and what this document would do uh, is this document is not issuing certificates of participation, uh, but this document is stating your intent uh, that, that should uh, all the variables come together to make this project materialize to issue the certificates of participation. Uh, where that is an advantage is uh, it, it gives us uh, a document to take to uh, our bond council uh, to show them uh, that the board is engaged and serious about issuing certificates of participation and they can begin drafting those documents in full. Uh, now another one of the actions uh, that uh, you moved forward with at the last meeting in December was advertising uh, the current city hall property and the lagoon property. Uh, those advertisements have been placed uh, in, in publication, uh, and they are the, the advertisement period ends uh, uh, on February 16th. Bids are, are due in uh, by February 16th. Uh, so you should know a lot more about your ability uh, to finance this transaction on February 16th. The advantage of having this document in hand uh, and to bond council is uh, they will have a pretty significant uh, writing exercise uh, that they will need to complete between now and then. And if you're in position to take action uh, at the second meeting in February, uh, you'll have completed documents on the certificates of participation so you can move forward with the financing uh, of the Cadence Bank acquisition. And so for public knowledge, I'm, I mean, of course, people are asking us, oh, you know, this doesn't I guess legally bind us to anything, right? No, it's it's non-binding legally. It's a statement of public policy that does convey the intent that the city's taken one more step down that pathway to acquire the Cadence building. 
but notice that the amount listed on here is a not to exceed amount because the city doesn't know exactly what it needs right now before those bids come in. So this is written with maximum flexibility. And the other part of the equation is uh, last time when the board was presented with the certificates of participation package, of course you know how deep that was. And by doing it in a two-phased approach, this way we do the resolution and then we do the trust agreement, assignment agreement, purchase contract, all of that stuff when the board has determined, if it will, that it wants to go forward with the issuance. Okay, so I saw the 8% and then I saw the not to exceed amount, but what about um, the thresholds met on the call or what we would sell pieces of property for? To, you know, you say saying basically this resolution said for all the variables are met then, and this project can go forward and this is eliminating some of that paperwork now and, and we'll follow up with everything else, but does this set thresholds on what we have to achieve from the lagoon or, you know, are there certain... You know, no, no, it doesn't set thresholds on any of that, but remember, uh, it's not a document that binds you to anything. Uh, before you are bound to anything, you will have the complete documents in front of you, uh, and the financing uh, would have to be presented to your satisfaction uh, before you uh, cast your vote on whether you want to go forward with the issuance. Uh, if, if you were to pass this tonight, uh, it does not give me any authority uh, to go and execute them and uh, bind the city to debt in the future. Uh, that, that would have to be a subsequent board decision. Alderman Wynn. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Wynn to approve an amended resolution related to the intent of the city of Starkville to issue certificates of participation as presented. Alderman Wynn, is that your motion? It is. Do we hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Carver. Alderman Wynn, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, I do not. Discussion. Alderman Walker. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remain open-minded about uh, this, and uh, the council has stated that this doesn't uh, bind us, and that's what the, the mayor has said. Um, other than uh, having a little bit more reading material as we move forward, um, it, council, is there, is, does this speed up the process any? If it were to be uh, approved tonight and or if it were to not be approved tonight, does this delay the process? Any? It doesn't delay the process. And as far as speeding up the process, it gets one document out of the way that the board won't have to look at the next time around when the rest of the COPS documents come forward. The, the concern that I have is just the sequencing of, of these things. It seems that this is a little bit of getting the cart ahead of the horse. We've asked, repeat, I've asked re repeatedly, as have others, to look at uh, a little bit more detailed due diligence information before uh, we seem to be continually to approve things and while may not be legally binding uh, a way to back out, but it seems like we're, we're this, the, the snowball is getting bigger and bigger as it rolls down the hill and the further you go along, the less likely it is that if it turns out to not be a great deal, then being able to stop that snowball from continuing to roll down the hill becomes more and more difficult. Um, at, at this point, I still haven't seen for this building or the Cadence building a detailed program of what's actually going to be in there, nor have I seen a detailed budget on what the renovation costs are going to be, what the upkeep costs are going to be for either of those. So at, at this point, I, I would like for us to just tap the brakes a little bit. Um, and as, as we move forward, this in, there's no reason that this has to be approved tonight until we have more information at hand. This isn't going to slow down the process if we want to purchase this building. But at this point, for me, uh, I, I believe this uh, getting the cart ahead of the horse and I'm uncomfortable continuing to move forward until I have more detailed information in front of me so I can make an informed decision on behalf of the, the citizens of Starville. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Alderman Wynn's motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed? By a vote of six in favor with one against, this measure passes. The next matter you have before you is consideration of change order number two for phase two construction contract for the parking garage and realignment of the CDG, CDBG budget. Uh, to reflect the construction change order. Ms. Benson, would you like to summarize the change order? Sure, I'll be glad to. Good evening. Uh, change order number two for construction contract number two involves three different items. The um, item number one, the subcontractor for fire protection identified uh, a better way to, 
to change the design and of the fire protection for the parking garage. It will result in a credit of $17,790. This is at the approval of your architect. Item number two, <clears throat> since this project was funded, you also received a grant from ARC for water, sewer, and storm drainage. Item number two changes the stormwater drainage on the south end from surface drainage to subsurface drainage. This will be at an additional cost of $1,629. And then item number three, there's some trees along Mill Street that are interfering with the installation of the utilities and at a cost of $9,215, these trees will be removed. This brings the total change order to a credit of $6,946. Questions so, or comments from the members of the board for Ms. Benson? Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Vaughn to approve of change order number two for phase two construction contract for the parking garage and realign CDBG budget to uh, reflect the construction change order as presented. Alderman Vaughn, is that your motion? Yes, it is. Do I a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Vaughn, you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any? Miss Benson, do you know if the tree removal or those are trees that uh, were at the intersection of Mill and Russell that have already been removed, or where where are these trees that are that have to be removed for a utility, and what utility is uh, conflicting with the vegetation? Can you answer that question? I, I can't answer that when I don't have the plans okay. with me. They are, however, in the city clerk's office if you'd like for me to go get those no, for that's, you. That's fine. I was just curious. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. The next matter you... Thank can, you, Ms. Benson. Can, can I say one quick thing? Yeah. Your $8 million grant is whittling away quite rapidly now. We're, we're down to about $3 million, which is still a lot of money in my pocket. But uh, at, at the same time, I hope that at least as you're traveling along Highway 12, you've had an opportunity to glance over your shoulder and see the progress that's being made. You can actually see something for your money now that looks like a parking garage. So, Hi. Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may. Ms. Benson, during football season, I met two people at the football game. Yes. Uh, Becky, Pr Justin Prysock and Becky Street. Do you know that they wrote me a card and told about how beautiful our Highway 12 is and sent me a... <laughs> and I was really, really knocked off my feet because it's not often that you'll get something like that. And for the record, they were using the mayor's seat, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So that so I have it here, and again, her name is is um, Becky a Street and Justin Prysock. Great, that's, I have it here. That's absolutely great. Thank it's you. It's not often that you hear positive remarks like that, and uh, you know, all too often you hear the the complaints and the negatives. So I'm, I'm and very I just happen to have that. it with me. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Benson. You're welcome. The next matter you have before you is a discussion and consideration of a one-time request for the from the Unity Park Committee to support uh, the uh, finalization of the project. Uh, Alderman Maynard. Yes, sir. I, I move approval of that. In the amount of three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars one-time fee uh, to, to complete this project. I think is. Mr. Taylor mentioned as well, this is a <coughs> project that's been a long time coming. This project is going to be uh, right within our downtown it's corridor, and I think it's going to be a project that we can be proud of. Right, uh, I'll get her to put it in the yeah, that's yeah. The uh, motion that has been made by uh, Alderman Maynard is to uh, authorize an appropriation uh, pursuant to the advertisement statute of $3,000 for a one-time uh, request uh, from the Unity Park Committee to finalize the Unity Park project. 
Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Alderman Carver. The questions I have are just, it, I, don't, I know there's been some history with this park or something. Maybe it's been, I guess, Alderman Maynard, if you brought it up, maybe you could tell us there's been a history. Does, but I want to know, does the county own this? Or yeah. it's a, you know, it's kind of odd. A lot of times we'll get requests for money, and, and I know a lot of people on the board don't like to give it out. And, and I don't have a problem with this one, but is it, if it's a county owned, are they having funding issues to finalize it? Or why are we getting asked for money? Because, I mean, we don't ask the county for money normally. So, My, my understanding, and Mr. Taylor, maybe I recognize this a little bit more. My understanding is this has been a joint project that involved county money and a lot of privately raised money as well um, moving forward to that. Um, I know that the county is, according to the email that I received, the county is um, input inputted ten thousand dollars into the project so far, and also provided a lot of the labor to rebuild the planters, make more space, and add steps up to a stage area. Um, as they get to the end of this project, is where they need the additional funding. They haven't been able to raise the additional private funds to cover that. But the county has already. They've contributed a significant amount. Um, according to the email, I received ten thousand dollars so far to this project, plus adding some in-kind labor as well. And when when will be the completion date or the unveiling? Uh, January nineteenth, at the end of the March. Here at March, it starts at thirteen thirty. Well, one thirty. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further? Mr. Mayor, this is a, just a, a question for maybe uh, council. Is there any legal ramifications or ability to be able to give this money to uh, this particular organization? No, uh, the city can proceed under the statute that the mayor referenced. Uh, it's under the advertising umbrella. The statute actually says the city can donate funds to activities, events, infrastructure, anything it deems to bring a favorable light to the city and advertise the goodness and benefits of Starville. That statute is construed incredibly broadly by the courts and by the AG. So if this board makes a finding of fact that this money qualifies to bring uh, parts of Starkville in a favorite lot, favorable light and advertise sections of the community, then uh, it can certainly travel under that statute. Uh, Alderman Maynard, as chair of the, the budget uh, and audit committee, wh where is this, this money going to be coming from in the budget? It would come out of our contingency money. Well, I'm certainly, uh, a, a, and for uh, us contributing, I would also hope that at some point when we need, say, for the, the fire station park uh, improvements or other improvements that we might need, that we might be able to, 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 to get Chris to maybe, can, uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, to go to the county a little bit and see if they wouldn't be willing to, 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 to ante up a little thousand dollars or two to, to help a, a city project that benefits all the citizens, just like this one being in the, the downtown core of our main street. Uh, call it quid pro quo, if you will. But uh, um, if we're going to if we're going to pay out, I'd like for the for the county to be able to help us out uh, as we move forward with uh, creating public spaces. Are going to to help improve for all citizens of Starkville. And the only other thing I'd say on this is I think it's always great to have grassroots efforts uh, to to get a project started. Uh, but I think this is this project is an example. Uh, it sure would be a good idea to start with a professional sometimes up front. So maybe uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that have, that have befallen th this project and uh, led to, to its uh, t untimeliness in terms of uh, project completion. Yes, sir. But uh, on that note, the committee is only seven of us, and we donated our pocket over three thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Thank you. look. Thank you for that and for con for contributing to make Starville a better place. And I, I feel confident that uh, my, my vote is going to be to to help move this project along. And I'm hopeful that uh, as we move forward, that we'll have other citizens that are going to generously donate to to help improve the, the public spaces in our community, like you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, the email I received came from Brother Rogers, who is, is on that committee He's as well, chair. chair of the committee. Yes. It was even more, but she paid. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter that you have before you is a request for approval of the claims docket. Discussion. So moved. So moved. 
motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve of the City of Starkville Claims Docket for all departments, including the Electric Department, as of December 31st, 2014, for fiscal year ending September 30th, 2015, as presented. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Chair, second. Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. By a vote of six in favor with one against, this measure clearly <coughs> passes. The next matter that you have before you is a request for authorization to allow the Starkville Police Department to enter into an agreement with the Edward Byrne Office of Justice uh, assistance in relation to the purchase of equipment and overtime. This is 100% reimbursable grant. These funds will be used for 25000 in overtime and 73500 in equipment. No Motion has been made by Alderman Little to approve of the request for authorization as presented. Alderman Little, is that your motion? Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, you wish to speak on the merits. No, any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter you have before you is a request for approval of modified tap fees. No motion has been made by Alderman Vaughn to approve of modified tap fees for water service to include AMI hardware as presented. Alderman Vaughn, is that the motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been seconded by Alderman Maynard. Alderman Vaughn, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any Mr. discussion? Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Delwin, can you, can you uh, talk to us just briefly about uh, the, the increase in tap fees and what, what you see that uh, uh, necessitating that? And, um, sure. Thanks for the question. Um, we, uh, in addition to doing the electric AMI, you know, which allows us to read and, and control uh, meters remotely um, from, from the office, we're also doing the water, converting the water as well. Um, the meters we've been ordering before are just the local read re mechanical register. We have to physically go in and read the, read the meter. Uh, the new meters actually have a digital digital register, which is more expensive. It's about sixty dollars more expensive than the mechanical registers. And then we also have to have the radio module, you know, the Elster AMI module is about eighty dollars. So there's you know there's an additional you know 140 something dollars per per meter that we're gonna have to spend on the average. Okay, so saying that the, the reason for the increase is the increase in the equipment that's being installed is the reason that there's a, a tap free exactly. fee increase. Exactly, yes. Okay. Thank you. These things work pretty well submerged underwater. Uh, it's just not a good thing to have them underwater. So we we're going to mount them in the pit as close to the lid as we possibly can. I just my yeah. mind in particular. I know this time of year is it. You know, I don't yeah. know how they read it. Yeah. But yeah. It, it stays submerged. But, but you know, that we we looked at different ways to install these, and the best method we come up with is, is when we install them, just get them right up right up against the lid. That should take care of it. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Alderman Vaughn's motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. You have no further open session business uh, before you. A motion to go into closed session to determine whether there is a need for an executive session is no more. Motion has been made by Alderman Little to go into closed session to determine whether there is a need for an executive session. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The board will now go into closed session deliberations, uh, and I will ask that the public uh, vacate the premises so the board can begin.